right, so one down. So this is the one that you kind of hear the motor going, but it ain't doing nothing. So let's uh, break into this one too. I wonder if we can just spin the motor over. Okay, so that motor seems like it's locked up. Sound that bird again. Oh, yeah. That looks like a uh, moisture got into that motor. <laughs> Definitely crusty. Oh yeah. I guess that's why uh, <laughs> it wasn't turning. I can just buy a new motor and uh, this could potentially work. So this one is going to be put on hold because I got to see if I can find a new motor. Then we got to clean all that up. <laughs> Gross. Okay, so I tried. It's been a couple days anyways. Uh, so I tried looking online to see if I could find this motor with the spline shaft. And I thought that might be the motor number, but that didn't pull up anything. Um, the size of this motor looked fairly familiar to me. Um, this end piece, not so much. And the spline piece, I'm not sure. But let me show you what, uh, what I got. So, as you guys know, I have a lot of stuff. I understand that, I just have no room for it. I only have a two car garage that's that's it so I got to stuff all my projects and everything in here so um, this is a cooler but not really at the same time it's a junk drawer of some of electronics and stuff so I have some of these little electric motors here. Obviously these are not what I'm talking about. But I, I know I got one from a Power Wheels. Yeah. That 
looks pretty much the same, right? Let's uh, see if we can take this gear housing apart and see what the end of that this motor looks like. So let's see if we can switch these over somehow. So this is completely smooth. Uh, this is splined, but it is a really tight fit. I think I might kind of try to make my own splines and then we'll uh, fall else fills. It'll at least roughen this shaft up so we can epoxy this gear onto this shaft. I have some uh, 80 grit uh, 80 grit emery paper and all I'm doing is just going in a straight line all the way around. I tried to I tried to use like a, a file this is just a, a jeweler's file and on one side there is just teeth that go one way and I was trying to put in like scratch marks that way but I think this steel is just too hard uh, but I think this will work and I don't know how well this will pick up but it's it's pretty rough and you can kind of hear that The ridges on there hopefully um, this does have a bunch of like looks like metal shavings down in there where the magnet is so I'm gonna blow this out real quick and I've had people ask me about this Fordham It's the Harbor Freight Fordham. Um, I don't think they make it anymore, but I do have a video on here about this. And it's been however long it's been. You can look back on the videos to see when I um, when I made that video. But it's been a while. I use this a lot. I actually have this is the original one that came with it, but. I keep a polishing wheel on this one. I just switch these out with another one. So, um, but yeah, use it all the time. Works great, no problems. So I'm just going to put some bigger grooves in this. You'll see all the little divots, so hopefully that will let the glue 
bite into that metal quite a bit better. Okay, so I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but um, I'm seeing how far this needs to go down. Let me see that um, to mate with that with that gear, and because we want as much as that we want as much as that gear tooth. Uh, contact and you don't want it to be too high you don't want to make it too low so um, yeah with this looks like it j just needs to be all the way to the tip of that so that kind of lets us know where to place this gear because again we don't want it too far down we don't want it too far up but I think if we have it level with this that yeah, should be fine so all I'm doing with this is just cleaning off the tip of this. Make sure there's no grease or oil or nothing like that. So the glue I used is a Sure Grip 16. It's made by Weld On. Oh, well, you can see it. Um, there are a few videos that's out there with this stuff. Uh, seems to seems to work pretty good. I've only used it a little bit. It's mostly for bonding plastic. I'll put a good generous amount on here. Okay, I'm just going to press it straight down. There you go, and it's flush at the top. So that should be where we want it to be. We got a little bit of got a little bit of glue on the bottom, which is fine, I guess. Kind of wipe that off. And it says it needs uh, 24 hours for 80% cure. That's a mistake that I've seen some people do. So your working time is five to six minutes. That means you can move it around. Um, and then after that five to six minutes, uh, need to hold it in place for at least 10 minutes. Then it has 80% strength at 24 hours. So we're gonna wait a couple of days, uh, make sure that that's good and bonded. The other thing we need to do is we need to clean this out and clean all that gear stuff out. So I was looking at this, uh, just cleaning that off for a little bit. It's some really, I don't know. I don't, I don't really like it. It's real tacky, tacky grease. I don't know. But we'll probably clean this out as good as we can. i probably use the parts washer once I get most of it out. And then we'll go from there. The other thing I need to do is desolder this. Desolder that and put that onto this. I don't know what all those do, but um, it's on there, so I guess we're going to put that on there. So here's how I'm going to orientate this. Come on, focus. Alright, so this has a little nub right there, and there's a little nub right there, so that's how I'm going to orientate this. I don't know if it's right or not, but that's what we're going with. Okay, as usual, the battery cuts off, but I think we got that all soldered on there. I know the way it was. So again, we're gonna wait um, probably 48 hours. 
uh, before we even attempt to do anything with this part. And again, we'll, we'll get back to cleaning this probably. Yeah, it's already 10 o'clock. I got to work tomorrow. Um, whoa. We'll finish cleaning this up once we're done cleaning that. I think we just button everything together and that should, should work. So, all right. I will see y'all in a couple of days. It'll be right, it'll be here coming up for you guys. Okay. So, I think the main thing right now is we're just going to scrape off like that. You get get most most all that out. Okay. I didn't want to take these out, but I think I'm going to take them out anyway. So, help me remember this. Um Obviously the big long shaft, it's going to be in the center. And then we have right here. Okay. So that was to that side. Now we're going to do this middle bottom one. Okay. So you got that pump. all this outside to the parts washer. I'm going to start with this first. finish cleaning this up and I'll get back with you. Alrighty, so we got all the parts cleaned up. I did need to re, uh, repack that bearing. Uh, makes a little noise but uh, it is what it is, right? Okay, well, it would be nice if I had a little brush but I don't. Um, this is just the grease I use in the tractor. Um, I just figured I'm not going to go out and buy the extra grease, the uh, maybe marine grade grease or whatever. This is just going to have to work. pin that goes how well you'll be on a set in there like that there we go okay so that's so in there we're going to throw a little bit more grease, but it does turn really smoothly. Okay. Okay, let me 
grab all this together. I gotta put the motor in first. These are stainless steel, so they're not magnetic. They're not very magnetic. So, if you use a little bit of grease, you have a temporary way to hold that in there. So you can kind of fish stuff in, get it taken care of. together. Now let's I can only get this to jump over for just a few minutes for a few seconds. shoot I thought I was recording um, anyway so I got that soldered in there so let's see if I can put this back in here somehow without breaking this stuff um, something else I had done was I took the little rubber gasket out that little o-ring and I put grease on it just to hopefully help make it get a better seal in there. Now I don't remember which screw went where. It's just going into plastic so I don't want to be too too crazy with it. Alright. Let's go ahead and stick this in down in here. It doesn't spin that fast, but uh, I don't know how fast these are supposed to spin. So we'll go ahead and finish putting it all back together. But at least we know it works. So there we go. So we got at least two of them. Um, 
I don't think this spins as fast, but I don't think it's a big difference. Um, it's it's really close to the same speed as the as the other one over there. So, all right, so good to go. Let me uh, let's go look at these other two real quick. So we'll start with just putting the battery in and kind of seeing where we're at with it.